Yeah, yeah and I think, I think you know, refer that it's so funny that you reference that. I mean, that's that's a really important kind of piece of scholarship for me too. Yeah. But but the what's interesting is like you know because there's only maybe like a limited amount of of folks who are who are aware of Sedgwick's work, and then you have to kind of do do the work of actually kind of saying like, okay, well, here's what this this term means, and here's what that term means. Like the the term that I usually default to is um, creative nonfiction. You know, as a way of kind of thinking through. You know, you know what it is that I do, what it is that I write, and I think like um, for people who are working off of very basic generic categories, I think that intimates like, okay, so you're not a fiction writer, right? But there's some, but there's some kind of agency in terms of kind of structure, in terms of kind of the way that you think about what you're doing, um, and I think that like for me, that's that's the. Um, I, I love actually Sedgwick's terms, and I I would use them in an academic, in, in an academic context, you know. Um, yeah, but I but I I find myself being drawn more and more to this to this term, um, creative nonfiction. No, that's really catchy. Of, I like that. Yeah, and it's and it's possibilities as a way of kind of um, encapsulating so many different kinds of approaches and um, and ways of behaving towards things which are not. Uh, strictly fictional in, in, in construct, you know, right. so, um, yeah, 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 I, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever, yeah. um, have you, uh, encountered Katie Stewart's ordinary affects? Um, I'm just thinking yeah. that's, that's a yeah, completely it's different, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that sort uh -huh. of ficto critical, yes. um, sort yeah, of I mean, I think of Katie Stewart, yeah. but I think of like Lisa Cohen, I think, okay, of, yeah. I think of folks like, you know, in my own field, folks like Molly Nesbitt yeah. or, um, you know, certainly the work of like, um, of, uh, oh my God, why is, why is her name escaping me? Well, Wayne Kostenbaum, um, God, there, oh, Catherine Lord, you know, who's really fanta fantastic. And it's, she's an artist and art historian and, she, and her is just, it's just stupendous. It's just, um, it's filled with the kinds of affect that. Um, you know that the that some of the best queer scholarship is filled with, but it's also like, but it also you know is really trying to communicate um, also beyond a kind of queer academic audience in some ways. Same thing with like Lisa Cohen's work. Um, it's interesting because I find that like a lot of a lot of my role models, um, you know, they tend to be like academics of a certain age, you know, like who who have who have done the book, who have done the academic book, and then and then choose otherwise, you know. Right. So, yeah. And there is. Yeah. Uh, anyway. And, um, and this is something that I've sort of that I remember reading about uh, from sort of through an anthropological disciplinary sort of stream. Yeah. I'm trying to remember now yeah. who this was, if this was Clifford um, or who, some very well-known person uh, writing on trans-local projects or like tra multi, multi-sided projects. Um, yeah. uh, I want to say it's maybe it's Marcus. In any case, he opens yeah. his essay by saying, you know, we have this problem in academia, and he's writing this in like the early 90s, that um, we have a lot, of, we're now exploring more experimental writing, especially those of right. us, you know, this is sort of anthropology and sociology folks after the crisis of representation that was in the 1980s, right? right. Sure. right? So sure. you know, we're being more reflexive, more experimental, we're writing all of these right. really exciting things, and we're attracting all of these graduate students who are coming to our program and saying, we want to do right. this, this is amazing. Right. And then we tell right. them, you can't do that yet, you first must do a proper PhD, you, to, you know. Right. And then, yeah, you have yeah. to take your medicine, right? Exactly. Like we had to do. Yeah. Right, right, right. Even though we, even though we chose otherwise, yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that's still yeah. that dynamic is still in play too, in the sense yeah. that you know oh, totally. your first book should still be disciplinary, disciplinary enough to get your tenure, but you know, yeah. Where it's funny. Know. Yeah, I mean, it's funny when when I when I was in defense for my dissertation, one of my committee members said. This is not a dissertation. Like she was like, she was like, it doesn't read like a dissertation. It's right. not. And I was like, great. Like, like, you no, know, because like I know that the task is to write a dissertation, but I'm I'm also thinking about this in other terms too. You know, and I think I think for her that was really disconcerting. I think like she she was troubled by the fact that I was not doing the disciplinary thing that I was supposed to be doing and that that and, and therefore the evaluative criteria couldn't be so easily limbed you know yeah. in in that in that context but I also think that like 
that like that, it, that that model of like you know take your medicine and then you can be creative later after yeah. your first yeah. I mean you know so many people told me that this that this project this book project which I hope will actually be my first book project yeah. is my second book project okay you know yeah. like right. like so many people Wait have said it. like oh, this is your second book right. and I'm like mm -mm. Mm -hmm. no 